Hello, I'm Patricia McNeely from Twin Flame Body and Twin Flames Merch. Today in this video, I want to talk about some things that have been very upsetting for a lot of people. And the major topic is narcissism. But as some people may be aware of, narcissism goes really far back. It's part of an ancestral pattern. It is uh, sometimes runs in families because it's a pattern of behavior. It's also a pattern of abuse. And for some people, they do live with levels of abuse or they've had abuse, which you're intended to heal in this life. The number one thing I want to tell you is this doesn't get healed without love. So it doesn't get healed with hatred. It doesn't get healed with psychology. You have to bring in the higher level of love into the body, which pushes things out, purges it out. Now, you're at a really good point for this because there is a huge push to make a lot of this easier for you. And I'm certainly not condoning narcissistic behavior or tendencies or habits or abuse. And that can run the gamut from someone just saying no or someone rejecting someone to flat out um, physical, mental, and emotional torment and abuse. So I'm going to read you something that I found, which I want this to be considered in the token of shedding light on some of the backstory as to why some of this happens. So this is something of an article that I found, and it's written by a man, and he says, you know, he knows that he sabotaged good relationships. And this is his response to this. As a narcissist, I will explain why I would sabotage a relationship that is capable of providing me with all of those wonderful things that I never got the opportunity of having as a child. Well, it all started back in a dream. But I was not asleep while I was having this dream. I was hiding under a blanket clutching my stuffed animals, waiting for my stepfather to come back after everyone had fallen asleep. He would check in from time to time and let me know that I'd need to be awake when he comes back. Well, sometimes he would come back so that he could wake everyone else back up to the sound of my screams. Well, he let me know everything that I did wrong on a daily basis. And sometimes that MF would just make me stay up all night instead, which was almost like a mini vacation. I was five years old, and though I had never been a bedwetter before, I had quickly become one, which is just another thing that I did wrong in a world where I could do no right anyway. Hiding under the blanket this dream these stuffed animals. I would imagine that I was in the country as an adult, or more grown up at least. I was bigger, and I had a wonderful, beautiful woman with me, and our kids, and our pets, and all our animals. It was my escape to dream of this. Hey, what are you doing? You better be awake when I come back, or else. This was the first bus stop within city limits that would take me straight to downtown hell, Express. And though I didn't want to take that trip, that's exactly where I was headed. The tall grasses swaying in the wind, vibrant blue sky, bright yellow sun. There was nowhere else for me to turn, nowhere else for me to run. I had been backed into a corner and I was what? Pathetic? Weak? Five years old. I was scared. Terrified of this man. Terrified of this man who had just moved us across states. And he would love to humiliate me. Once excused me from the table then made me eat the rest of my food out of the garbage can because he didn't tell me to throw it away. My mother was gone, and by that I mean she was there. 
She was there, but she wasn't. Never stood up for me, never made him stop. He once told my father over the phone that he would go get me and whip my ass right there for him to listen to it. So I hid. I ran away while lying in bed, my blanket offering me no protection from what the night very well might bring. So I ran and hid myself away into this dream with my eyes wide open. And I would be truly lucky if he did not come back. She was the love of my life, or the closest thing that I've ever known. But she never even existed, and I would never feel loved by anyone else for too long. Perhaps long enough, maybe. Long enough for me to watch love die in my arms like a rose in a vase. But faster, push, go further, so much faster than you ever dare. Push, spill harder inundating everywhere, push, using both hands to pick up the whole world and push, throw it from atop the cliffs of insanity, the wind in your hair, the smile on your face, the magic in your eyes, the emptiness within, the world that always spins despite me, push, can you feel it pulling you? From your comfort, push, zone of silence, leaky faucet, and funky, push, aura of despair, that hangs like a trophy, push, you want a piece of me, get up and find me, the sun in my eyes, the feeling in my gut, omitted truths and lies, the turmoil within me, the face that always grins sleepily, push, do you want it? Say the words, don't even ask me. Push, because I've got it in my pocket and it belongs too. You always talk as if the sky is falling, but my world is. Push, falling apart from the stress of carrying a thought that I might pick up the pieces and find that I've lost more than just a few that were important and useful. Now there is nothing left of me because everything I might have been someday belonged to you. Your voice out of reach. Your memory now but a whisper. Your visage now but a blur. Your arrow in my heart. Your country, your castle, your dream all thrive without me. It all thrives without me. And not just my memory of a waking dream that I can hardly remember now. Everyone who I have been with has been better off without me. And I have made sure of it. Even when it's the last thing in this world that I ever wanted to make, waste my life repeating, like a VHS tape, press we rewind, turn the clocks back, don't wake me up this time, just let me not exist again. And if I have to, then please make sure that I forget. And if I can't forget, just let me be alive for once. Let me be comfortable and safe. Trust for who I love. And let me love them, please. Because I've been dying my whole life to live, but I don't know how. And it's way too late to turn back now. There's nowhere left for me to go. Why do I unintentionally sabotage every relationship that I've been, been in, even if they have all of the stuff? Because I hate myself. I hate myself for not being able to love you. And I hate you for not trying hard enough. So I found that article, and it's a poem by a man named Brian. And I, what I feel is that 
a part of him as a five-year-old knew why he was here. He was here to be with someone. Just like many people feel that they are here to be with someone. And sometimes it's just that simple. I'm here to be with you. He was daydreaming the dream, which is actually real. Not something surreal. That is what is real to us. The person we're here to be with. The person we know is supposed to be with us. Not the fears, not the things perpetrated by other people. So how do you get rid of this? And I say to you, if your twin is a narcissist, just like we used to say on the playground, hey, does it take one to know one? Oh, you're a liar. Takes one to know one. Okay, where are we narcissistic? Are we narcissistic? I'll tell you sometimes this happens in past lives. It has happened with reversals of your stations. All of that needs to collapse. It collapses from within you with only work that you can do to pull yourself away from your lower chakras, to help your twin to clear away lifetimes or this life of abuse patterns, of abandonment. When you feel those things, you're not just feeling it for your side. You're feeling it for both of you. You really do. And this is not a joke. You're not a joke. You engage the things that need to be cleared because that's what love does. We don't intentionally engage in it. We sometimes come up against it and we want to melt it. We want to heal it. We want to purge it. The time is gone for running from it. We can't run. We can't run from patterns that, you know, we've been carrying also. You can't run from your emotions. You're, you're a being who feels everything. Even if you have calluses, even if you've had walls, even if you've had to dodge and deflect, you're still here. And transcending it Transcending the archetypes is what we're here for. Becoming the lover and not being the abused and tormented, not being the narcissist, not being the warrior, not being the prostitute. Okay? You can't buy this stuff in, you know, it, it comes up for people. People are tired of buying that stuff. Tired of buying the low-level things. Tired of contributing to patterns that run in families. So it is time here because the switch has already flipped. Psychology isn't sufficient. While your mind is getting answers, your heart is pining. The initial love that you felt, which you know you're here to bring it, and feel it tangibly. You're here to make this love tangible. It's real. You're not here to be a martyr or a victim or sacrifice yourself on the altar of love again. You're not here to receive someone who is carrying around the bucket. The bucket of what they've had to endure and they don't even know why? What does a five-year-old do to deserve this? What did that person who perpetrated it on him, who had to keep the upper hand, who had to power play a five-year-old? For what? Okay? And this stuff goes really far into history. It goes into taking people and trapping people and deceiving people. But don't do the self-deception and think that, well, you're going to relegate this to another life. No. This is the life. This is the culmination life. Because we are not going for another go-around. I'm here to encourage you. And encourage you that when you work with your body, with your twin flame body, which I help you with, the love hits the mark. The things start to divest. Because I guarantee you, if you were that person's twin flame, you would be in there like this. 
Does your masculine sometimes rise to want to defend your twin? Or are you just fighting someone? Okay, there's a difference. If you feel that there's contention and there's struggle and fighting, you need to do something else and you need to engage your twin flame body. That is what I help people with because that is how you use the force of love on people. It's not by calling names. This is not going to earn you a degree in psychology. You are here for a lover. And you're not bringing all your terminology and psychology and all of that with you into your intimate moments. You're here to ooh and ah and get back to real living. So I'm going to read you something else. And I hope you enjoy this. It's, it's somewhat of a book, but it's a poem. I'm calling it a poem. It's by Nancy Tillman. And it's called, Wherever You Are. I wanted you more than you will ever know. So I sent love to follow wherever you go. It's as high as you wish. It's as quick as an elf. You'll never outgrow it. It stretches itself. So climb any mountain. Climb up to the sky. My love will find you. My love can fly. Make a big, big splash. Go out on a limb. My love will find you. My love can swim. It never gets lost, never fades, never ends. If you're working or playing or sitting with friends, you can dance till you're dizzy or paint till you're blue. There's no place, not one, that my love cannot find you. And if someday you're lonely or someday you're sad or you strike out somehow or you think you've been bad, just lift up your face, feel the wind in your hair. That's me, my sweet love. My love is right there. In the green of the grass, in the smell of the sea, in the clouds floating by, at the top of a tree, in the sound crickets make at the end of the day. You are loved, you are loved, you are loved, they all say. My love is so high and so wide and so deep. It's always right there, even when you're asleep. So hold your head high and don't be afraid to march to the front of your own parade. And if you're still here and you're all the way grown, my promise to you is you're never alone. You are my angel, my darling, my star, and my love will find you wherever you are. You are loved. I like this and I like to read it because the love you give, the work you've done, your desire, your devotion does hit the mark deep inside where it's supposed to. And some of this goes deep. Still waters run deep. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you, my hope is that you find it encouraging. Let me know when you need help, that you need help. It has been my privilege for many years. And I'm grateful for all the people whose love stories that I've heard for more than 10 years. So when you feel ill and when you know that you need more, come to see me. The links are below. And I wish you well and I wish you love as we close out this year. 
with heaven above because it's inside of you and inside of me. And what a wonderful world for this to be. So thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Look for the links below or reach out to me at twinflamesmerge at gmail.com. Thank you. Bye.